Praise be Jesus Christ, and thank you for joining me for Lexio on the Go. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our readings uh, for this uh, lesson is 1 Peter 3, verses 18 through 22, and the Gospel of Matthew 28, verses 16 through 20. These are the readings for Easter Friday. Uh, so we are within what's called right now uh, Easter week, which is actually eight days. So we go from Sunday, Easter Sunday, all the way to Divine Mercy Sunday. The, those eight days um, are considered uh, little Easter's, basically every single day a little Easter. So, for instance, uh, typically on Fridays we would uh, feast or fast. I'm sorry from meat. Uh, today we can feast on meat because we we are within the octave of Easter. Uh, so a great, uh, wonderful week for us. And uh, one thing that you might notice with all the readings this week is they kind of have the core basics of our faith. Um, it's, a, it, it's just a good Bible study just to look at the readings just for these eight days because they're awesome. And uh, today is, is one of the best. I really want to focus on the gospel only in this lesson. Uh, but please also read First Peter because First Peter kind of gives an outline um, as we've been hearing from Peter and Paul this whole week. Uh, the gist or the, the kernel of our faith. But let's look at the gospel here. So this is the, the um, this takes place in Galilee and it's called the Great Commission. This is uh, Jesus before he ascends to the Father. He is going to give the marching orders to his apostles, to the eleven is, is what it says. And so, um, so he says, all power is given to me in heaven and on earth. All power is given to me in heaven and in earth. So all power. This is why we would say that God is almighty. And since the Father and the Son are consubstantial of the same substance, part of what we mean by that substance is the essence of divinity. What does that mean to be God, to be divine? That one essence, that part of what that means, one of those attributes is all-powerful, almighty. And so all power has been given to, of course, Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ obtains all power. Where? In heaven and in earth. Um, and so he is now, this is an important link, and if this doesn't happen, people get confused. But God the Father gives all the power to the Son. Um, the Son is obedient to the Father. Um, of course, they are one in essence, um, but, but Christ always puts himself under the Father in obedience. Uh, so we have that Jesus Christ is all power, has all the power in heaven and earth. He is then going to give that power to these apostles. He is not going to give that power to every single Christian. He is going to give that power to the 11. Um, that's an important distinction to make because if not, it, that, that distinction right there, the Father giving the power to the Son, and then who does the Son give it to? There's kind of two, two main camps here, I guess. If the Son hands over that power to the 11, then those 11 become the leaders in the church, the first apostles, the first bishops, and then they um, then have the ultimate power of that ministry of Christ to teach and preach, to heal and sanctify and to govern. So that's the threefold mission of Christ. Then it becomes the threefold mission of the apostles if you follow that. Uh, so the apostles then, their job is to continue the mission of Christ, which is to teach, right, to sanctify, to heal, and to um, have the governance, right? Um, so, if you don't believe that camp, then the other alternative would be that then he gave it to every single believer. That would mean that every single believer then has the authority to teach, every single uh, believer has the authority to heal, and every single uh, uh, believer has the uh, authority to govern. We don't believe that. As Catholics, we do not believe that section, that sec sec second one. We believe um, that first option, that Jesus Christ, having all power, handed it to the apostles. That's why we believe in an apostolic church. This is what we mean in the creed when we say an apostolic church. So these apostles are the first bishops. The bishops then have the main authority to teach, heal, and govern. Our job as a baptized person is to, of course, be a witness to Christ. We are to be a little Christ, to put on Christ, to be a witness to Christ, and to give testimony to that witness. That's important. But we don't have the ultimate authority of the teaching, the ultimate authority of the healing, and the ultimate authority of the governing. That falls to the bishops. So a big distinction there um, that needs to be made. So what does Jesus give these apostles? He tells them, teach all nations, right? That's that teaching part. 
He says, baptize in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. So the number one way, of course, that we are healed is through baptism. This is how we're incorporated into Christ and healed of sin. Uh, of course, uh, we have a, a confession, which acts like a healing after baptism. Um, but baptism, go baptize all nations and then uh, have them observe, command them to observe all that I've taught you. This is where the morals come in. So teach, baptize, baptize and observe. That's what all nations are supposed to do. Heed the teachings of Jesus Christ. Uh, be baptized and uh, have that life of grace to heal your soul and to bring about salvation. And observe the commands of Christ. And, and um, I think it's important. I think Jerome gave the, the commentary today in the Office of Readings. But Jerome said, in that observance, it's all that I have commanded you. Te have, teach them to observe all. So we can't pick and choose. The, the all there is all that Jesus commands us. So it's important for us, one, to know what is that all? What does Jesus command us to do? And then to be observant to all of those things, even the most inconvenient things, even the ones that we struggle with, um, the sins that we struggle with, we have to um, observe all the commandments. So this ties into, one, teaching ties into our doctrine. Who safeguards our doctrine? Really, it's the ultimate authority of the, of the bishops to safeguard that. Uh, we are blessed to have 2,000 years of an apostolic tradition, so we have this clear doctrine throughout the ages. And so that's pretty important that that, that has a, a continual uh, continuity there. Um, the second, baptize. Well, baptism is one of our sacraments, but also we have other sacraments. We have the Mass, we have the, the prayers and the sacraments. And so all of that is our liturgy. So the doctrine is important, the liturgy is important. And then, of course, to observe, that's our moral life. So... As a Catholic, what is so important to us is to have those three things always happening. The doctrine, that, that we um, believe the doctrine, that's our faith, that we uh, practice the liturgy, that we actually say the prayers, the devotions, live the sacramental life, and that we actually live out those morals, um, that we observe all that Christ teaches us. So I guess what is our part as lay faithful? Um, it is to be obedient to the teachings, it is to live the sacramental life, and it is to live out the moral life of the church. When we are obedient to what Jesus teaches, when we actually have faith in what he teaches, when we actually, uh, with devotion and piety, live the sacramental life and pray, right, and we have that, that interior life, and then when we actually act in charity towards God and neighbor through morality, observing all his teachings, we are giving witness to Christ. Sometimes that witness will lead to our death. That's what witness means, a martyrdom, right? So that is our part, is to be a witness to that and then give testimony to that witness. That is enough for me. <laughs> so I don't need any more than that. I, I am very happy just being faithful to the teachings, um, having an interior life where I participate in the prayers and sacraments of the church and living out uh, the moral life. That is challenging enough to me. I don't need to be given anything else. Um, so as a layperson, I'm happy to just do those two things, to give witness to those two things uh, through the actions of my life and to give testimony to those things through my words, uh, through my writing, doing anything I can, right? Uh, especially with my family and friends and anyone I come in contact with. It then is the job of the bishops to safeguard these things, to continue to safeguard the, and teach the doctrine, to continue to uh, make available the sacraments, um, and to um, hold on to the moral life, uh, especially in a time of relativism where truth is being attacked and truth is being relative, that we can say, no, there is a, a ultimate truth and it is what Jesus teaches us and we are to be obedient to um, and to observe all that he commands us. Um, so praise God for this Easter week and also this Easter season, but especially this Easter week where we have such clear teaching from the gospel, from our Lord, on exactly what we're supposed to do. Let us not lose track. If we're a bishop, let us not lose track of these three. And if we're a lay person, let us not lose track of these three. We can get so sidetracked with everything else, all these other things that we could be doing, and it's so simple. A lay person has just been asked to be faithful to the teachings, to, to pray and to enter into the sacramental life and to observe the moral commands. It's that simple. A bishop has been asked to safeguard and teach the deposit of faith, the doctrine, to make the sacraments available and to nourish the prayer life of the church and to hold the moral line. 
um, hold to the observance of the commands of Christ. So let's do those three things. Let's do those well. Let's pray for each other. Thank you for, join, uh, thank you for joining me for this uh, Lexio on the go. Please take the time to visit linkedliturgy.com where you'll find fast, free, and faithful resources on the gospel. Also check out our online school that is linked to liturgy teachable.com and please do a search online for remnant band divine mercy chaplet in the name of the father and of the son and of the holy spirit amen